friends, it's Miss Jennifer here at Braum. This week we're going to be studying artist Henri Rousseau. We're going to do either a realistic tiger collage like this, or a little bit simpler one like this. You'll notice that each collage has something in the foreground very close to you, these stripes of grasses, something in the middle ground, the tiger, and something in the background, in this case, the sky, and there are a few plants back there too. Before we begin, let's learn a little bit more about Henri Rousseau. Henri Rousseau was born in France in 1844 to a poor family. After serving in the army, he went on to work as a customs officer near Paris until the age of 49 when he was able to retire. Before that, he painted only on weekends and was completely self-taught. His favorite subject was to paint jungles, but Rousseau never went to a jungle or saw a jungle creature himself. Instead, he based these scenes on botanical gardens in Paris and animals he saw in zoo pamphlets and guidebooks. Let's create our own Rousseau-inspired tiger collage. So to begin our lesson today, you're going to need a few sheets of paper for painting and drawing, scissors, paintbrush, black crayon or pencil and eraser or black sharpie for drawing, some kind of paint, I'm showing you with some cake temperas today, but you could use watercolor, liquid tempera, really you could even do with markers or crayon. Uh, some kind of glue. I prefer to use white school glue in a little cup with an old paintbrush and some water for cleaning your brushes. So we're going to start with blank sheets of paper and paint some different greens for jungle grasses and foliage. Let me show you how I painted each of these. This was just painted with some tempera paints. I mixed a little blue and a little yellow to make kind of a green background. And I brushed it loosely on. You can see my brush strokes. Some places it's thicker and some it's thinner. I like that texture. This piece was also painted with tempera paints. While the paint was still wet, I just took the end of my paintbrush and scraped these lines into the wet paint to make it more interesting. I also added little bits of pink in here, like some tropical plants might have. If you don't want to use temper paints, I painted this piece using oil pastels and watercolor. The first step is to draw some lines or scratch marks with different colors of crayon or oil pastel. I used some yellows, some blues, and some greens. Don't cover the whole paper though. Next, you will cover the whole paper with your watercolor paint. And the watercolor paint won't stick to or cover up where you drew with your crayon or oil pastel. So that will still shine through the paint and it makes a really nice, interesting texture. Okay. So paint one or two pieces of colored papers for your background. And while those are drying, we will draw our tiger. I've posted two different how to draw a tiger lessons for you to use as a reference. I'm going to do the simpler version now, but you can look and see which one is right for you. So for this one, I'm going to use almost my whole paper and draw a large oval. Connecting about like so. Then I'm going to make two lines down for his neck. I'm going to draw below the middle of the oval. I'm going to draw a smile with a line across. That will be his nose. Now I'm going to make two almost vertical lines to go from the corners of his nose all the way up to his forehead. 
Next, from the corners of the nose, I'm going to draw a diagonal line to the outside of the oval, like so. One on each side to match. And then he needs his ears. Make one rainbow. I'm in the middle of filming. I need quiet. Draw another rainbow with one going inside, like so. Once you've made the ears, the next step is the stripes. So you could get very creative here with your stripes. I'm going to do some basic triangle stripes matching on each side of his face. And I'm going to make my tiger two smiles for sleeping eyes. If you wanted to make his eyes open, you would draw two frowns on top with parentheses in the middle and then color the black part or pupil of his eyes. Now tigers have kind of a eyeliner around their eyes almost like a natural makeup. This thick black line. So I'm going to use my crayon or black marker to make that nice and black. I'm going to give him a little smile. This is a friendly tiger. And last, some whiskers. There we go. Next, I'll go ahead and color in the nose with my black crayon or marker. And now you're ready to paint your tiger. If you'd like, you could draw some plant shapes in the background and color those or use your paints for them. Nice jungle plants or grasses, vines. Now I'm ready to paint. So with these paints, I need to wake up the color with a little extra water first. I'm going to give my tiger yellow eyes and we'll do some pink in the middle of his ears. Very cute. So next I'm going to paint the background, a sky, and some plants. I'll start with the sky. I'm going to use a little bit of yellow in my plants. Just a few dabs here and there just to make them look more natural. What do you think? Now we're going to let this tiger dry and while he's drying I will cut some shapes like long leaves or vine shapes from these painted papers and we'll come back and collage and glue those on with our liquid glue. So here I have my dried painting of my tiger. I painted the background, some leaves and sky, and I took my large pieces of painted papers for foliage and I cut them into some interesting jungle grass and leaf shapes. So. The next step is to glue them on and we'll have a finished piece. I like to use school glue in a little cup and if yours is thick like mine, you might add a tiny bit of water. So first I'm going to practice arranging the leaves in a way that I like on top of my painting to make it look like my tiger is peeking through 
the grasses in the jungle. Maybe something kind of like that. All right, and then I'm going to glue each piece. So I take the piece, turn it over, and brush my white glue on the back. You notice I'm working outside of the painting so I don't get extra glue on the painting. And then glue it on. I find that the school glue painted on holds much better than using a glue stick. But if all you have at home is a glue stick, that will work too. You might just have to use a little bit extra glue on there. So I'm painting, starting with the pieces that are on the bottom. And then as I come into the foreground, I will glue those next. This piece is going over top. I'll glue it next. Here's our finished Rousseau inspired jungle collage. Don't forget to email your work to jennifer at blowingrockmuseum.org.